This video will demonstrate that in the quantum world, particles follow waves backwards, and in particular, neutrons do. It's based on data published by Helmut Kaiser et al. This is basically the research team established by Helmut Rauch that established the science of neutron interferometry back in the 1990s. It's an article published in Physical Review in 1992. This is a highly respected research team and a highly respected journal. They took neutrons from a nuclear reactor in the upper left, which came down and entered the blue rectangle, which is a neutron interferometer, within which they bounced off various silicon blades. The blades split the beam into two beams, psi 1 on the bottom, psi 2 on the top, and then the two beams were recombined with each other in the right-hand side before they left the interferometer and were seen by a detector. Just at that point where the two beams, psi 1 and psi 2, split, there was an oscillating aluminum plate which caused the phase of the two waves to be different than each other. And therefore, when the two waves recombined before leaving the interferometer, the detector saw a sine wave, which is to say wave interference. Now, bismuth is a metal, uh, the 83rd element, which slows down neutrons and neutron waves. They put a sample of bismuth in the upper beam, psi 2, but not in the lower beam. The size of the sample varied from 0 to 5 millimeters to 10, 15, and 20 millimeters of bismuth. When they put bismuth into the upper stream, it slowed down the upper wave packet so that it did not overlap so well with the lower wave packet when they recombined and left the interferometer, and, and therefore there was a lower height to the sine waves, which is to say less interference. Eventually, when they reached 12 millimeters, millimeters or more of bismuth, there was no more interference at all. Apparently, the upper wave packet had been so delayed by the bismuth that it missed the boat, and the lower wave packet had already left the interferometer before the upper wave packet got there. That is shown in this graph, in which you can see D is the thickness of the bismuth uh, from zero millimeters at the top of the graph down to 20 millimeters at the bottom of the graph, and as the amount of bismuth increases, the height of the sinusoidal curve decreases. Then they repeated exactly the same experiment with one tiny difference, which is that they put a silicon analyzer crystal in front of the detector. Now this crystal has the effect of decreasing the scatter of uh, wavelengths of the neutron beam, but increasing the height of the Gaussian in the center. So it focuses the beam so it penetrates better. However, the analyzer crystal is outside uh, the interferometer downstream from the interference and it should increase the penetration into the detector but have no effect on the interference going on upstream. Right? Wrong. The researchers discovered to their amazement that when the uh, analyzer crystal was present in the experiment, robust interference was restored throughout the interferometer. Even with 20 millimeters of bismuth, there was a robust bust interference, high sine waves. That is shown on the right-hand side of this graph, and if you pay attention to the yellow area at the bottom, you can compare the effect of no analyzer crystal on in the center column versus uh, the presence of an analyzer crystal on the right. The researchers could not explain this, and they said that quantum mechanics can't explain it either. We say that if the presence or absence of a silicon analyzer crystal uh, controls the presence or absence of interference inside the interferometer, then the analyzer crystal must be upstream from the interference, which can only mean that waves, zero energy waves, are starting at the detector, moving backwards through the equipment, entering the nuclear reactor, and from time to time a neutron is following those waves backwards and registering and making the interference visible. We see no other possible explanation of these data than to say that there are zero energy waves going backwards and that the neutrons follow the waves in the 
reverse direction. I have spoken to many audiences of physicists who, despite the evidence, find it impossible to understand how particles could follow waves backwards, but they are even more appalled at the idea of particles following zero energy waves. People have very definite ideas about zero energy waves. Basically, they say that. Number one, there are no such waves. Number two, if there were zero energy waves, they could not do anything. And number three, Schrodinger waves do the heavy lifting in the quantum world. Do you see the contradiction? The contradiction is that Schrodinger waves are zero energy waves. They convey probability amplitudes, not energy. People tell us that this idea of quantum particles following waves backwards is gibberish. It's nonsense. They say they cannot understand it. In 1912, a guy named Alfred Wegener declared that there was once a continent named Pangaea. He's the one who made up that name, which contained all current continents and that Pangaea broke up and the continents drifted apart to their current position. Every reasonable scientist on earth denounced this idea as gibberish, as nonsense. They said they could not understand it. His idea was denounced by leading scientific societies and even by his own father-in-law. It was clear to everyone that there's no force on earth strong enough to move continents around. That's what happens to people who come up with new ideas. Thank you very much for your attention.